Please welcome to the stage author and journalist James Ball. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Music Notes, the best small music conference in the world. We're going to be joined today by some of the music companies in the world, some of the most streamed artists of all time, and some of the biggest up and coming music startups out there. Our first speaker has produced some of the most successful music based films of the last five years, working with artists like Lady Gaga, Sean Combs, Imagine Dragons, Eagles of Death Metal, and Wiz Khalifa. Her most recent production, A Star is Born, has been an international hit. Let's take a look. I'm told we have a trailer. Ready? Maybe okay. it's time to let the old ways go. Maybe it's time to let the old So please welcome to the stage in conversation with Alex Kantrowitz from BuzzFeed, Chief Content Officer of Live Nation, Heather Parry. I feel very far from you. I'm gonna move these pillows. I could <laughs> just come over here. So. Um, oh so wait, I'll now they're playing the trailer. Okay. Well, I guess we could just get started. Um, how many people here have seen A Star is Born? All right. <laughs> Thank you, fans. guys. How many people knew it was produced by Live Nation? All right. Way less, which is really interesting because Live Nation is a concert company. So what's a concert company going out and making feature films for? I mean, I think the thing that people, um, you know, a lot of people know, but some people don't, but Live Nation is more, obviously, than a concert company. Um, they have joint ventures with a lot of managers, one who is Lady Gaga's manager, Bobby Campbell. They also, Live Nation owns a lot of different music festivals, so that's Bonnaroo, Lollapalooza, so it's, it's somewhat like over 100 festivals, um, which is a great way to promote our films. And then they also have Ticketmaster, which reaches over 180 million people that you have their emails, so you can send out your movie trailer or your documentary trailer, and it's a good way to promote. So, but at Live Nation, our motto is always artist first. So whether that is a talented filmmaker like Bradley Cooper or someone like Lady Gaga, we want to get behind and support. And why does film specifically fit into your mix of things you want to do? Like I could understand the music festivals, you're on venues and ticketing. Film is this whole different world. So why, <laughs> why film? I mean, for me personally, my background is film and television and music altogether. I started my career at MTV when I was 22. Um, I ran the West Coast news office of MTV. And for me, it was this great place in your 20s to discover a way to do content that you're doing, you know, you're interviewing artists, but MTV also had a film division. They had a TV division. They, they were very big music fans. So I took that and then after that, I went and ran Adam Sandler's film division and did a bunch of movies with Adam Sandler. So when I got to Live Nation and it was time to build something, it was really a natural fit that we're going to do these great music documentaries, these great feature films that have elements of music to them, whether that is an artist like Gaga or a score, and that we're going to make TV shows. I'm going to ask you some questions about A Star sure. is Born in a bit. Uh, but first, I think it's interesting. So this is the first feature film, but you've been working on some more documentaries. Um, and you've done some that wouldn't feel natural, I think, from my perspective, for a concert company, uh, including revisiting um, the shooting that happened in Paris with um, the, the band that was playing at the Sorbonne. So can you tell me a little bit about your philosophy in terms of making movies? I would imagine that if I'm a concert company, I want to um, maybe take a little bit uh, of a nicer approach and not really deal with the hard subjects, but you certainly have. So why is that? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is that when I went to Live Nation, um, I literally left Adam Sandler's company, Happy Madison, on a Friday and started working there on a Monday. And I didn't make an announcement that I was going to work there because there's lots of companies and music labels that are like, we're doing content now. And I'm not a person 
to really talk about what we're doing. I'd rather show people. Um, so I got in, head down, blinders on, and just got started right away with making documentaries. Our first one was The Eagles of Death Metal, which was about um, them going back to Paris after the attacks. And you know, the second one we made was um, Puffy and, and the story of Bad Boy Records. And the third one was Lady Gaga, a doc that we did called Five Foot Two, which we sold to Netflix. So very quickly, we had three very different, diverse music subjects. And it showed the town and everybody in the business that we're not going to make these sort of docs that are just these electronic press kits, for lack of a better word, that we're going to make real, authentic documentaries for music fans. And I, I think even if you're not a fan, of um, Lady Gaga or someone like Dan Reynolds, who's the lead singer for Imagine Dragons, we did a doc on where he took on the Mormon church about his stance on gay rights, that you get to see a different side of these artists and fall in love with their passion and, and get to really see you know, what they're really about. Is there something about not playing it so safe that's helped with your success? For instance, we have a lot of people here who have seen A Star Is Born. One of the things I liked the best about it was that it ended so dark. And um, it's alert. not something I re everybody who came here knew what they were in store for, yeah, but it's yeah. not something that I would expect. I kind of imagined that I was going to get a happy ending. It doesn't really seem something that was like that would be produced by Live Nation. So is being is taking risks. Has that helped you out? Yeah, you have to take risk. I feel that's the way that helps you grow your business. Um, for us, you know, we had done four documentaries. We did another movie for. Netflix, which was a comedy called The After Party, which was like a hip-hop super bad. And, but, but I knew, um, I had heard that they were trying to make A Star Is Born when I started at Live Nation. Originally, there was different, um, you know, different phases of it. It's the fourth remake, first of all. So if you hadn't seen the other ones, but everybody knew how that movie's gonna end. But, um, you know, the thing about A Star Is Born for this one is I knew, I knew Bradley Cooper from just working in the movie business and I knew he was going to make a great director um, because he's so passionate about what he does. And we were doing the Lady Gaga doc at the time, Five Foot Two. And I think anybody else would have gone, you know, first time director, first time actress. But, but you know, I just know, again, our motto at Live Nation is artist first, whether that's the filmmaker and Bradley or someone like Lady Gaga, that it was going to, it was, it, I put, I was all in. I put my whole bet on that because, um, and that would show the town really quickly also that Live Nation's in the you know, movie business in a big way. Were you surprised at how well Gaga acted that movie? Because I think a lot of people were like, holy shit, she can act. Yeah, I think a lot of people were surprised. I wasn't surprised because I, I obviously, working at Live Nation, I sit next to her manager. I love Gaga as an artist, but you know, I, early on, she had started out as an actress. She was on even um, one episode of The Sopranos and, and you know, she had done American Horror Story, but I just, anything that she does, she's so authentic, which is so important to the craft of acting. So I knew she was gonna be great. And now that you've built this relationship with her and Bradley, you've already done one hit movie, generally that means that things compound. Are there more Gaga movies coming down the... I, I hope there's more Gaga movies. There's definitely more movies. Um, so, so we have more stuff in production that we're working on. Which, what are the next movies you're doing? Can't talk about the next movies we're doing, but soon. You can talk a little bit about what's coming next, though. Yeah. Um, you know, again, keeping in the theme of sort of documentaries and TV shows and films, we, um, Dave Grohl, the lead singer of the Foo Fighters, his mom wrote a book, and uh, Virginia Grohl, and we bought her book. And the book is great because what it is, is it explains, you know, she interviews all these different moms. She interviews Dr. Dre's mom and Pharrell's mom, and, and a lot of these moms were single moms or school teachers. So it's basically, you know, Dave had directed this um, docuseries for HBO called Sonic Highways that I loved. And so I went to Dave and, and I said, I want to buy your mom's book. And we had a meeting with him and his mom. And here's what we're going to do. And here's how we're going to break it down in episodes. And for Live Nation Productions, it'll be our first docu-series. But what's great about it is that Grohl's going to direct it. So it's perfect for us because it's one of our biggest artists directing something for us and gets to do this great docu-series on, you know, that his mom started with the book. We were talking backstage about how Dave Grohl dropped out of high school. He knew he wanted to be a musician. Now you've had some time to speak with him. His mother was a school teacher. How did she feel about that whole situation? 
Yeah, I mean, that's the great thing is you get to see all of these artists journey and what really has made them. And it's not like anybody has handed anything to them. They've worked really hard to get where they are, um, you know, in doing the docuseries and this, and, and, and reading Ginny's book and talking to Dave and her and, and, and starting in our interviewing process with them. You know, Dave did not have the best time in high school and um, knew that he wanted to be a drummer and a musician and played musical instruments and go on the road. And his mom who was a school teacher at the school he attended, which he wasn't getting the greatest grades, had seen the potential in him that he should drop out of high school and go on tour. So, so his mother, a school teacher, was like, Dave, you need to stop coming to school. His mom, his mom was very supportive of her son saying, you know, I get this school thing isn't working for you. Go follow your dream. And it worked out pretty well for him. You know, one of the interesting things, so I watched the Gaga documentary, Five Foot Two, and I was just planning to watch like five minutes to prepare for this. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna watch the whole thing. One of the things that's interesting is you really, you see these documentaries get pretty intimate with the stars that they're profiling and show them in like very vulnerable moments. And I'm curious, is there a balance that you have in terms of, are we gonna be in trouble if we show the star like in an in a unflattering matter or in areas where they might not wanna be, you know, to be seen or like doing stuff that maybe they might not feel great about when it comes out. And do you worry, is there a balance in terms of the relationships that Live Nation needs with the artists for ticketing and you know, how you approach it from an editorial perspective? Yeah, I mean, at the heart of it, I'm a music fan, you know, so, so it'd probably say music fan and, and producer. So, but you know, it depends on the artist. Someone like Lady Gaga is very different from Puffy. When we did the Can't Stop, Won't Stop, Bad Boy documentary, it's Sean Puffy Combs. He's very involved. He watched every cut and what had notes on everything and wanted it perfect because it was a, you know, part of his life story. Um, Lady Gaga also, you know, Puffy is very raw and authentic, but so is Lady Gaga, but she had a different approach to it, which was, you know, uh, I trust you. And she trusted the director and her manager was one of the producers. And she said, uh, you know, do your thing and didn't, honestly didn't watch it till the Toronto Film Festival, which was the first place we played that documentary. And she sat in the audience and watched it for the first time. So it was a little nerve wracking that the first time Lady Gaga's watching the documentary you made is next to you, but it went pretty well. So what was her feedback? She, you know, she laughed, she cried, she was, she was happy. And you also get to see in this, you know, the great thing about Live Nation and, and doing this is that you get to see you know, something like her documentary came out and, and Joanne, her album, a couple weeks after it had gone platinum and Art Pop had gone platinum. And, and in the case of the Imagine Dragons Believer doc we did, um, you know, that doc came out on HBO and a, and a couple days later, their Love Loud Festival sold out in Utah, their tour, their forum date sold out. So you see that these documentaries are, are opening a new side and a different type of audience to them. Are these documentaries kind of slam dunks for you? And I, I wonder if A Star Is Born fits into that box as well, because Gaga has such a passionate fan base that they're going to watch it no matter what. Is that a, something that goes into your calculation when you make a movie like this? Yeah, listen, A Star Is Born, our bar is obviously really high right now, and, and I'm okay with that because I love a challenge. Um, but, you know, I love making the documentaries we make too because it's a chance for a different look at an artist. I think when people see Dan Reynolds up on stage, the lead singer of Imagine Dragons, they don't expect him. People didn't know that he was a Mormon. And if they knew he's a Mormon, he didn't know that he's opposed to the Mormon church and, and their stance on gay rights. So, um, you know, these docs are a place for artists to tell their real authentic stories, but also to, you know, what they're passionate about. And, and it's a lot of stuff with artists and activism, and that's a great place for us to be. All right, I want to ask some uh, nuts and bolts questions about A Star sure. Is Born that I've had since watching the movie. Okay, great. So it's a little strange. Bradley Cooper is, wants to direct this movie. He's, he works with Warner Brothers to decide that they want to make it, and then they bring it to you. How does that whole process work? It was more like a, I, I stalked Warner Brothers and Bradley Cooper, so Live Nation could be involved to put it to put it nicely. Um, again, I knew Bradley was was super talented. It was it was you know supposed to be Clint Eastwood. It was supposed to be Beyonce. There was talks about different things, but um, you know when they had said it's Bradley and Gaga, I had called. Bradley's agent, who was on a ski slope at the time, he was on a chairlift, and I was like, get off the chairlift and call me back, and to his credit, he did. Um, I talked to Bradley about it. I talked to Billy Gerber, who's the producer. I went to a dinner party at Billy's house, and it was for Martha Stewart, and everybody was in the corner asking Martha her recipes, and I was just focused on Billy Gerber trying to get us into a Star Is Born. 
I then went and sat with Warner Brothers, this woman Blair Rich in marketing, and explained to her, this is what Live Nation's about. Here's all these incredible assets we have. You know, I'm able to put the trailer and run it in over, you know, a hundred of our music festivals. I'm able to put it in the venues that Live Nation owns. We can run the trailer in the suites. Um, you know, and again, something like where you really see Live Nation's marketing force working is Lake Shake is a festival that we have in Chicago. And in between Dirks Bentley and Blake Shelton, we played the Stars Born trailer. So when you're in front of 55,000 people and you're playing a trailer to your movie, they're watching it. So you know that you're reaching that real authentic music fan. So once I'd gone to Warner Brothers and said, I can put the posters up in the venues, I can run the trailers, we have these festivals, we, um, we have Ticketmaster. So, you know, in Ticketmaster, has so much information and data, which is incredible to have. So I can look up everybody that bought a ticket to Lady Gaga's tour. I can look up everybody that bought, you know, her residency that she has coming up in Vegas. <clears throat> and then I can see what else did they buy tickets for. So in this case, with Gaga, people bought tickets to Bruno Mars. And I was like, okay, what's the connection here? And, and Mark Ronson, who's a songwriter, had written Uptown Funk with Bruno. He had also written Shallow with Lady Gaga for A Star Is Born. So we then also could send the trailer to all of Bruno's fans. And, and just a way to, again, to connect the dots with music fans. It's really great and helpful to have that information from Ticketmaster because you know the audience that you're speaking to then. So going to Warner Brothers and then saying, here's all the people can reach. Here's everything we can do. Live Nation has this power force of marketing assets. They instantly got it. They were great to us and, and it was a great partnership. Yeah, it seems like if you were making a music movie at all, you'd be stupid not to work with Live Nation in some way. I hope so, I hope that's the message we're sending. And, and do you, did you do targeted advertising? How else did you use that data outside of saying these are the people that might be interested? Yeah, I mean, I, you can, you know, the great thing is you can, when you send out the email, you can see who opens the email and it's like, what do those people like? And, and do they have kids? Do, are, they a, is, are they someone who's single? Where do they live? What do they do? So, you, you know, you can really, you want to target people's interest in that way. Did it help shape any of the final product in the movie, the story or the settings? Um, I mean, that's all Bradley. Bradley Cooper is, he's so talented and, and not only as an actor, as a director, and he did a great job on this for his, you know, it's for his first movie and, and it, you know, he's incredible. So a lot of that stuff and the thinking behind that, that credit all goes to him. Are you going to be able to track how this movie and how these documentaries lead to ticket sales? You know, one interesting thing is Amazon, they do Prime Video and they have data that shows that if you watch videos on Amazon, you're likely to spend more money on detergent in Amazon or something like that. Are you going to be able to track data like that? I haven't gotten into that yet. My focus is more just to make a great quality film or an amazing documentary or a great TV show. And then I believe if you make good premium content, the audience will come and, and follow you with other things. I want to come back to a theme that we hit on in the beginning, which is like, this stuff is pretty raw. It can get dark. It's not, it, you know, some people might say this is, my, this is a form of content marketing. It doesn't really feel like content marketing. So how do you look at the relationship between the documentaries and the movies you make and what content marketing is? And um, along that note, is this like an actual business for Live Nation? Is it profitable? Yeah, I mean, every, I can say this, every documentary we've made has made its money back or, or doubled it, you know? So I think a lot of people love watching documentaries and want to know more about their artists or just love to discover documentaries. And now with things like, you know, Netflix and HBO, you know, there's, there's so many different content places now to go and find those things. Um, but you know, it's just, um, for us being in the business where we can be one stop shopping of having an artist come in to talk about their tour and saying, Hey, I, they go, I have this movie I like, or I have this documentary I like, or there's this TV show I've been always wanting to do, or, you know, I want to buy this book. We are here for them in that way to support them in any way we can with their artistic vision. So, you know, something like, um, you know, I've known Puffy from my MTV days. So when he comes in for his tour, our CEO, Michael Rapino, literally says, come next door. And I go over and I see Puff and then we, you know, start talking about the documentary and we jump into things pretty quickly. But then I sit in Artist Nation, which is all the managers at Live Nation and the, the offices that we have are glass. And um, Bobby Campbell, who's Gaga's manager, was walking by when I was playing something from the Bad Boy doc. And he's like, what is that? What are you doing? And, um, that's where we decided to kind of get into the Gaga doc. So 
it, Live Nation is a great place for synergy that you have these managers walking around and these artists walking around and they're in the building and the touring department and the marketing department. So again, we want to be this one stop shopping for artists and a place that they can call home for all of their creative visions. And how do you balance that with being focused? A lot of people might say, okay, you're doing ticketing, you're doing promotion, you're doing events, now you're doing films. It's probably better to just stick to one thing. Obviously doing a lot of things at once has worked for Live Nation. So how do you stay focused and where's the balance? Like what's the limit of the stuff that you'll do? I mean, there's no limit to the stuff that we're gonna do. I have a lot of help in a lot of different departments and you know, something like A Star Is Born was a first thing for us and, and the marketing assets that we give gave them which to Warner Brothers, which we had never done before. But there was a great guy, Ryan Oakham, that works in marketing, Tom C, who does venues, Russell Wallach that does sponsorship. And I sat down with all these people and the people that own the festivals and work on the festivals and say, here's the vision that I have. Here's what I want to do. How can we do something outside the box that's never been done before for a movie? And how do we make it really big, you know? Well, thank you, Heather. I loved the movie. I thought it was thank fantastic. You. It seems like there's a lot of fans out there as well. And I'm really looking forward to what you're doing next and appreciate you spending the time up here talking to me about thank it. Thank you so very thank much. You. Thanks, guys, for Heather coming. Perry, thank everyone. you. Maybe it's time to